All right, guys, so I got another overview video here on some of the new Express LRS Happy Model parts that come, come in. Um, I already did a video on these super tiny receivers. Let's see right here. Um, and also the micro module, which you can see is in this 3D printed case already. That video I will link down in the video description. Check that out if you want to see details on those. Uh, they sent some additional parts here that expand their ecosystem. Um, I'm kind of curious as to why there's no other companies besides Happy Model getting into this um, Express LRS parts. Um, hopefully uh, we'll get some more competition in here because um, I do know that a lot of you guys are like weary about Happy Model and their quality control. Um, now my thinking is on their quality control is that they sell a lot more stuff than um, other companies. So uh, say that, you know, company A is a really good company, but they only sell 10 parts and one person complains about a bad part, okay? That's a 10% error rate. Um, and everyone thinks it's a good company, but company B, let's just say everyone thinks they're a bad company. You see 10 complaints online, 10 times the number of complaints, but then they, they sell 10 times as more. They sell 100 of the same part. But it's the same 10% error rate or failure rate. So both companies are the same. It's just the perception of company B is worse because they just happen to sell more because the fail rate is the same. You get more complaints. You never hear about the people that are like, oh, it's great. It works perfectly. You only hear about the complaints. So that's my view on that. I'm not going to get into that whole thing there, but I do wish that there was more competition in this area. I do like the fact that Happy Mail is um, making some really interesting parts here, and um, I hope to see more. Anyway, I have two all-in-one boards. Uh, they're basically they're whoop boards, and so we have the uh, 915 megahertz board here. And what's interesting is I posted some photos of these up on Instagram. And they're like, oh, this is a, uh, these receivers are way too big. They're gigantic. And this is not a receiver. This is an all-in-one flight controller board. So, okay, let me just put one of these down. This is this board here has a 4 in one ESC flight controller. Um, it's got a video transmitter and the Express LRS receiver built into the board, which is incredible. Uh, so, yeah, if it were just a receiver, yeah, it would be too big. But this is like a... You could, basically build a whole quad out of this little thing, which I'm going to eventually do. And which is the point of this video is I want to show you what these look like before I stick them into a quad and you can't see them up close. Um, this board does come in a 950 megahertz version and an 868 megahertz version. So depending upon your region, you're going to want to get the correct one for your region. It does come with this uh, standard uh, key, uh, antenna here. If you want like uh, the antenna that's uh, like a, like an immortal T, I think you have to get a separate. You can buy those separately for extra cost. But you know, for for smaller builds, you want something like this for reduction of weight. Uh, but yeah, the antenna is detachable on this one here, but the VTX antenna is not on this particular version. But if you look at the 2.4 gigahertz version, this is what the uh, 2.4 gigahertz version looks like. You got the ceramic antenna. So there's no additional antenna for the receiver. That whole receiver and the antenna is built into the board like that. Uh, but the VTX antenna is removable on this particular version. So it comes separately like this. This is the other ports you get, the antenna, plus uh, I think that's a connector for the video. And then uh, you, of course you get your battery lead here. It's gonna be PH2 connector. That's pretty standard for this. I think the uh, ESCs are um, everything. So basically this is, um, this these. Both these words are based off of the Crazy BX um, design, which has like the video transmitter and the receiver built in. So this is really only for 1S, and the ESCs are only rated up to 5 amps. So you're pretty limited in terms of what you can put this in. Uh, you know, if you want to put this into like a 5 inch 6S quad, uh, no, this is not going to work on that. This is going to be limited to like, whoops, um, maybe some toothpick class type of boards, uh, you know, on one S, but you know, again, uh, at five amps, if you're really pushing things, um, and you crash, for example, and, and uh, put a nice little burst of 
power or voltage to this board, it probably pops some ECs and some other components because this is very densely packed. So for those of you guys that are uh, probably pushing things really super hard and crashing a lot, I would not recommend this for you. This is this is really going to be for those guys that are trying to build things that are super light, you know, trying to maximize flight time, those kind of things, and um, uh, not really, you know, uh, doing a lot of bashing. I, I don't think these things are going to be able to take a lot of crashing. Uh, but for maybe, you know, whoop style flying indoors on 1S, uh, should be okay. We'll see. You know, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put this into whoop. I'm thinking I'm going to put this into the, the Recon uh, 3, actually. See if it actually survives that one or not. It's going to be probably the upper limit of something you'll probably want to put this in. But um, just, you know, again, looking at the board again, got your power lead here for the uh, battery lead and that a lot of you know things to solder you can disable the video transmitter on these boards there is a uh, solder blob here somewhere okay so the solder blob is right there if that's bridged uh, it, it, that means there's power to the video onboard video transmitter but if you don't want to use the onboard video transmitter and you want to use a external video transmitter you have to desolder that or get rid of that solder blob and then you have solder pads here for uh, video in and video out for an external video transmitter. I think the internal video transmitter is only limited to 25 milliwatts. So you're not going to be flying super far away. But if you disable the onboard video transmitter and solder on an external video transmitter, then you should be able to get more range that way. All right, so this is how much the uh, 2.4 gigahertz board weighs. Uh, 4.58 grams. Uh, this is how much the uh, 950 megahertz board weighs with the antenna. I'm not going to take it off. Uh, 4.93 grams. So, yeah. Just think about, it, about under 5 grams for pretty much everything that you need to build a quad, except for the frame, the motors, and camera. I think that's it. You got a camera, motors, and a frame, and you got a whole quad. And uh, yeah, depending on what those other components weigh, you know, the quad could weigh pretty much next to nothing. All right, so take a quick look at the uh, module here. This is actually only for the T-Lite. So here's the uh, an antenna. It's removable. This is uh, not a 3D printed module case here. It's actually like made out of aluminum or metal. It's for heat dissipation. They um, designed this power module and so you're going to have to consult the product pages, some diagrams and wiring diagrams on how to plug everything in. Don't believe any soldering is going to be needed because uh, you have to basically do some rewiring inside your T-Light to basically uh, reroute the power. That's what this power module is for. It basically allows the uh, 1S power to power the um, transmitter module without burning out the radio. So I actually bought another T-Light here, brand new one because the one that I'm using for Crossfire is actually modified already and it's also broken so it's not going to probably work with the setup here so I'm going to have a I'll probably make a separate video maybe later the actual uh, install is pretty simple you have to open it up and then use, all the connectors and everything are right in the bag here and it's fairly straightforward as to how you're supposed to do the, the power re rewiring so basically you have power coming in battery in over here and battery out over here and then that goes to the uh, module here so basically you have a pass through that's coming from the the 1s lipo it's so a battery in battery out this this goes back to the t light board and then these two here are one goes to the module this one over here and, that's, and then another one goes to the t light and uh, that's for the control of the um the signal and everything pretty straightforward if you look at the diagram it shouldn't be that hard to, to figure out but it looks like um this is a kind of a permanent install because it has like a thermal pad here and you have to screw this onto the back of the tea light so this isn't one of those where you can kind of swap it out in and out for a crossfire you know maybe i'll look into maybe seeing if that's possible to do it could be po possible it could be done if uh there's some modifications or maybe some 3d printer parts might be able to do something like that but it looks like this is basically going to be just for this tea light so that's why I'm, I'm i got a separate tea light just for this one and another one for crossfire um because it looks like it's to be able to switch back and forth between this and crossfire is probably not going to be that easy um also kind of wondering if this power module might be 
uh, useful for Crossfire as well in terms of rerouting the power around um, uh, that 1S power limitation if you don't do the modification. So that I'm not 100% sure I'm going to investigate that, but putting this together and on the TLA shouldn't be that difficult if you just follow the wiring diagrams on the um, product page. Now regarding like tutorials and all this kind of stuff, I'm considering putting some of that together. Um, basically, if you go to the Discord and like the Wiki page, they do have instructions on how to like do the flashing and all that kind of stuff. And also on the product page, there's going to be some instructions on how to do the binding. For example, these the binding on, on these uh, all-in-one boards uh, is just via the uh, Betaflight SPI bind RX command, because these are just SPI receivers. They're just using a different protocol. So binding uh, shouldn't be too difficult getting it going on, on the board. And then, of course, uh, you use the um, Express LRS Lewis script and OpenTX on your radio to um, initiate binding on that side. So um, none of the firmware, I think, needs to be updated at this time. But later on, when more, because I, everything right now is still in beta. So later on, when more finalized firmware comes out, I may do a tutorial on how to do firmware flashing because right now things are still kind of early days and I don't want to put a video out that's going to be outdated in a couple of weeks. Um, that has happened before and I end up just doing a lot of work and then taking the video down after like a couple of weeks, which really is pretty annoying. So I'm going to wait and hold off on that until things kind of settle down. You know, this is really still for early adopters, in my opinion. If you're someone that wants like, you know, easy carefree type of like updates you know you probably want to be looking at crosswire uh, because you don't have to worry about like firmware mismatching problems make sure that all the firmware on the all the receiver and everything are exactly matched because crosswire takes care of that for you in the background i don't believe this system this ecosystem does that yet um, so you're responsible for making sure that the firmware on the module and the firmware on the receiver are all um, compatible with each other. That's kind of the, the, the big problem with the R9 system is that firmware mismatching problems led to massive um, headaches and just all sorts of issues for end users because its ecosystem wasn't very friendly. So right now, I think this is really for early adopters. Um, you know, if you're a newbie, I would stick with something a little bit more user friendly like Crossfire or Tracer and just pay a little bit more money for that. And obviously, if you're looking to the future, this might be the future if they can figure out the sort of firmware problems or, or so the ecosystem in terms of like uh, making the firmware updates and all that kind of stuff very user friendly and easy to do without a lot of thinking, then yeah, this could be something for you down the road. But I think right now it's still kind of a wait and see sort of situation. Anyway, here's just a quick look at the transmitter board. Regarding um, whether or not this will work with the x Lite, it does not. This is specifically for the T-Lite and whether or not it'll work, work for any other radios with the, the, with the micro module or the, not the micro module, the, 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 the nano module is what, is what these are called. Uh, there's going to be a separate version later. So have model will make a separate version for the X-Lite um, in the future, but that isn't out yet. Um, uh, hopefully we'll, I'll get a hold of that one, but I don't have an X-Lite to test anyway, so I'm not sure if they're going to send me that. So, but if you're looking for that one, don't get this because it, this one is only for the T light. Um, wait for the next version if you're looking for ones that's going to work for the X light. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I'll have more videos on this later um, as things develop. And of course, I'm going to do some testing. Um, probably going to put one of those all on one boards in my Recon 3, is what I'm thinking right now. Uh, 1S toothpick. Um, just kind of cruise around, see what kind of range you get. Oh, yeah, you know, well, again, regarding questions regarding range. Uh, your mileage may vary. Um, it's going to totally depend on where you're flying and um, what kind of obstacles are in the way. 2.4 gigahertz is a little bit more um, susceptible to things, um, you know, blockages from like buildings and stuff like that versus 900 megahertz uh, can penetrate a little bit better in, this, in that case. Um, but yeah, range is really going to be totally dependent on where you're flying. Uh, you could put it on max power, and in an urban environment, you're not going to get as far as someone in a really open, wide open space. But generally speaking, the 2.4 gigahertz system here, I've, from what I've been seeing from other people that have this, they are getting much better range than any existing 2.4 gigahertz system. 
um, and uh, much better latency. So if you're looking for much better range of latency over an existing 2.4 gigahertz system like a uh, Free Sky, Fly Sky, etc. Spectrum, yeah, this is definitely going to outperform that. Uh, to what extent? Um, still a little bit up in the air. I know a lot of people are, are getting really far, and then of course you know it really depends on on the uh, you know specific situation that they're flying under. So I would um, yeah, if you're looking for maximum reliable, provable range, you know it's probably going to still be Crossfire 900 megahertz. You know that's kind of the gold standard. I haven't heard of anything beating that yet, but yeah, you know. Um, you will have to see. It's still early days for this system here. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. Talk to you guys later.